ASML reported their earnings this week and the stock is down by about 15%. It's currently trading at about $723 with a market cap of about $270 billion. Not long ago, just few months ago, it was trading at $1,100, right? So is this an opportunity to buy this stock? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. In doing so, I will cover ASML's business model briefly. Then I'm going to go over the two reasons why the stock is down this big. Then I will go over the financials briefly. And finally, I'll do a valuation. Let's first look at the business model. ASML makes advanced semiconductor equipment systems. In other words, they make machines that help manufacture the chips. And they broadly divide this into two categories. One is logic, the other one is memory. The category logic refers to the processing semiconductors such as CPUs, etc., that the likes of TSMC makes. And the other category, memory, refers to the chips that are designed for storing data, like the ones that Micron makes. The biggest clients of ASML are Taiwan Semiconductors, Intel, Micron, Samsung, etc. Now let's move on to the two reasons why the stock is down big. Number one reason is shown on the screen. The bookings were 5.5 billion euros last quarter that's q2 of 2024 and this quarter they're saying the bookings are only 2.6 billion euros that's a reduction of 50 percent and bookings are the commitment to buy from their customers right so this is not necessarily a bad news maybe because they may get more orders later it's just that their clients did not commit on buying them but again this has freaked out a lot of investors thinking that the demand has fallen down, right? So this is the number one reason, the bookings. Number two reason is shown on the screen. For financial year of 2023, they made close to 27 billion euros. By the way, I'm using dollar sign here because the conversion rate is 1.06. So they're pretty much the same. So that's why I'm using 27 billion dollars. So for 2024, they said it's a transition year and do not expect any increase in revenue. So everyone is okay with 2024 revenue being at 28 billion from 27 billion a year ago to 28 billion. That's almost no gain, right? For 2025, everyone is expecting a huge increase in revenue, but ASML gave a guidance between 30 billion euros to 35 billion euros. The midpoint is 32.5 billion euros, which represents 16% growth. We have seen the likes of Nvidia that are giving 50% growth, and ASML having a transition year this year should have grown much faster, right? That's what the Wall Street was expecting, but they went ahead and said 16% growth and that has also freaked out a lot of people. So the stock is down because of these two reasons. Let's see what the CEO is saying. So it's shown on the screen. So basically he's saying that the demand for the AI related products is there, but the other categories is slow. And he's also saying that in both logic and uh, memory new technologies are coming like in memory the hpm and ddr5 if you had listened to micron's uh, earnings you would have known about this hpm and ddr5 so basically there is a trend they are also undergoing some transition therefore they may be thinking that we will order machines from asml at a later point because we are going through this transition so the message from ceo is the demand is there but it will not come this year 2025 it may come after that so a lot of people are not buying this logic but i am i think there is um, merit to that argument i think the demand is there it's just that it's not here in 2025 it may be there in 2026 2027 2028 that's why you will see in the valuation my uh, assumptions now let's move on to the financials as you can see on the screen, at $723, the market cap is about $270 billion. For the past 12 months, they made close to 30 billion euros. And therefore, the price to sales is just under 10. And we cannot necessarily say whether this is cheap or expensive based on price to sales, but the P ratio here is 34.9. So that is still on the expensive side, but given the mode that ASML has and given the growth that they're going to undergo next year, I think that's not expensive. And look at the net income, that's 7.73 billion on a revenue of close to $30 billion. So that's 25 to 27% net profit margin, which is very healthy for a hardware company. 
And one thing that I want you to focus on is the dividend. They pay close to 1% dividend. That's about $6.5. And they have close to 393 million outstanding shares, right? So they have to pay 6.57 to each of those shares. So that consumes about $2.7 billion. So even though they have close to $7.7 .7 billion of profit, out of that, $2.7 billion will go towards dividend payment. So they'll have the rest of the $5 billion left for investments like capital invest expenditures or to buy back stock. So please remember that because I'm going to use that in the valuation. Let's quickly look at the balance sheet. This company has close to $5 billion of cash and cash equivalents. So that's impressive in general, but they also have close to $5 billion of debt. And they are also claiming $4 billion of unearned revenue. Basically, they are the advances that they received from their clients. So overall, the balance sheet isn't super. Uh, it's not terrible either, but it's not super that I get excited about. So I'm not going to consider this cash, $4.9 billion of cash in the valuation. Before I move on to the valuation, the more interesting part, I want to clarify that this is not financial advice. I'm not qualified to give financial advice. I'm simply recording my thoughts about ASML. I'm going to show two cases, one with reasonable assumptions case, the other one with more optimistic case where there will be hype, right? So let's look at the base case. For 2025, I'm assuming the midpoint of their guidance, which is 30.5 billion euros. And again, I'm using dollar and euro interchangeably because the exchange rate is too, uh, too close to one. And I'm estimating a growth rate of 15% for the next three years after that, 2026, 2027, 2028. You may think they may grow faster. Uh, in that case, you can um, assume that growth rate, but I feel as the company gets bigger and bigger, it's hard for them to grow, right? Because there's only finite market and there are finite number of companies that buy machines from these, um, from ASML. And also note that this 15% will result in close to $50 billion of revenue. So that's not less they still have 18 billion to make up for, right? So this $49 billion in 2028 is uh, not pessimistic, okay? Net profit margin, I'm gonna keep the same. Again, 27% is really impressive for a hard co hardware company. And with that, they'll make close to $13 billion of net income in 2028. I'm assigning a multiple of 30. With that, they will be close to $400 billion of market cap in 2028. With reference to the number of outstanding shares, currently they have 393 million, right? but they will have money left after paying the dividend close to five, five to $6 billion each year and they have to do something with it, right? So I also have to give credit to that cash. So what I'm doing is I'm assuming that they'll use that money predominantly to buy the uh, shares back. So that's why the share count I'm assuming is 354 million. That's 10% less than current share count. I think this is too optimistic, but this is my assumption. Again, you are welcome to change this. So overall, when I divide the $400 billion of market cap with 354 million outstanding shares, I get a stock price of $1,132. Currently, it's at $722, right? That's about 57% gain in four years, and that's going to beat the index. So this is not a bad gain. And let me show you the other case in which there will be some hype and there's a high multiple. Everything remains same. Only thing that I've changed is a multiple, that's 40. If I apply a multiple of 40, if people pay up for this company, it'll be worth $1,500 a share in 2028. That's more than double, 109% gain in 2028, in four years time. So in conclusion, I'm looking at close to 57% gain in the reasonable assumptions case and 109% gain in the more optimistic or higher multiple case. So personally, I feel $722 is a good price to start a position because in the reasonable assumptions case, that's what I consider for my investment journey. I can get 57% gain and that's going to beat the index, right? And if my plan is to buy $3,000 worth, let's say, I will try to buy one third right now and then to fill up the rest of the two thirds, I'll wait for a better price because this company is not going to grow too much in 2025, right? So that will make me think that this stock will trade sideways for more than a year. So why am I in a hurry to buy, right? So those are my thoughts. I would buy one third first, one third of the position that I'm planning. And then rest of the two thirds, I'll wait for more opportunities. I think I personally like a double in a reasonable assumptions case. So $1,130 is the target. 
So for me to get a double, I should be in the like $560 range. So if it gets to $560, then I would be interested. So I'm not going to uh, FOMO into this trade. I personally am not buying at 722, but at the same time, it's not a bad idea to buy at 722, a little bit of a position, but I need more. Uh, I need at least a 2x in the reasonable case. So I will wait until this drops below 600. If it doesn't get there, that's okay. Um, even though this company has great mode, the numbers do not impress me as much. As you see, the margins are good, but balance sheet is not too good. And the growth is also limited because this operates in a very, very niche industry and they have limited number of customers and there are supply chain constraints, there is politics, there are sanctions. So I don't want to get into this mess unless I see a better return. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.